Hello everyone, my name is Tumi, I am part of Informatica Data Management team. Today I will be talking about the new dashboard with new feature that is Confluent Kafka with Schema Registry. In this session, we will get to know what is Confluent Kafka and how to create a connection and configuration details for the Confluent Kafka Schema Registry and the understanding of the Schema Registry and existing limitations and enhancement made on 10.4.0 and the demo. Now let's try to understand what is Confluent Kafka. The Confluent Kafka connection is a messaging connection. It can be used uh, as a Kafka connection uh, to access the Kafka brokers or also the Confluent Kafka broker as a source and target. You can also create and manage the Confluent Kafka connection in a developer tool or also through the InfoCMD command. So this is a screenshot uh, which I have taken from 10.4.0 admin console uh, where under the messaging uh, there is a new option that is created that is called Confluent Kafka. Uh, using this you will be able to create uh, the Confluent Kafka with schema registry. So in this screenshot uh, where you can able to see under the new Confluent Kafka connection name. So there is a there two options which has highlighted that is Confluent uh, the Kafka broker list and also the schema registry url which got highlighted so these are the two details which you have to provide it uh, during the confluent kafka schema registry creations so having uh, created this now we will be ready to uh, like you know import the object and run a mapping before that now let's try to understand what is the schema registry the schema registry is a service uh, which is running on confluent platform that stores the schemas at the centralized location for the Kafka producers and consumer. There is a deceleration API which is used when passing the Avro data. Also, there is a serialization API which will be used when generating the Avro data. The deceleration API uh, will provide by the Confluent platform that enables the user to deserialize the data using the same schema that was used uh, uh, to the serialized data. The serialization API allows the user to produce the serialized data with a schema version stored in a message. So mainly this schema registry will work only on the Avro schema uh, which is supported on 10.4.0. So this is a pictorial representation uh, where how the schema registry works. Uh, the, uh, as a source side, there will be Avro transformer uh, which will be get called to deserialize an API. Uh, this uh, deserialization API uh, will be used when passing the Avro data. Uh, so now the deserialization API will be checking under the cache schema registry client uh, whether the schema version is present. If the schema version is something mismatched or if it is not present, then it will be get called to the schema registry and collect the, uh, the right schema versions. And then how it will be that is how it will be get deserialized the API. Similar to that in the target, we also have an Avro generator which will be get called to the serialization API. This serialization API will be used to generate uh, uh, will be used uh, when generating an Avro data. So this uh, serialization API will be get called to the cache to schema registry client uh, to know the uh, schema version if if it is a different. A schema versions then it will be get called to the centralized schema registry to collect or uh, to get the uh, right schema versions once it got called then it will be get uh, generated avro uh, data by using a serialization api these are the enhancement uh, made on 10.4.0 uh, it is like ability to create a design time column projection from the schema which is being stored in the schema registry also handles the record to, uh, with additional columns and infer the information about the additional columns and their values. So this information will be used when supporting for adding or uh, propagating the dynamic ports uh, will be implemented. It also handles the record with one or more column absence. Uh, there are authentication and encryption steps uh, which can be used for the schema registry to store the schema as a Kafka topic. This schema registry act as a client to Kerberoist or SSL enabled Kafka brokers uh, when we are trying to fetch the schemas. This required, uh, there is a required key tab or uh, store file needed to be configured in the schema registry uh, when the brokers is enabled with authentication or encryption. This encryption or authentication code changes are required for communication between the schema registry, also the client API and the schema registry in the progress of the confluent branch. This uh, changes are uh, still in implementation and will be get uh, no, uh, incorporated uh, post in full. 
Now let's see the demo how to create a confident uh, Kafka schema registry connection and uh, run a mapping. So I have a tag 40 admin console. I uh, click on connections and the domain you can go on new connections. So under the messaging, you can able to see the new connection called Kafka, uh, Kafka uh, confident Kafka. If you click on that, it will be navigated to create a connections where uh, you have to specify the name. Then you have to specify the broker list followed by you have to specify the schema registry URL here. So having uh, these three, uh, now you will be able to create a connections. So now I have created a connection. I just did a test connection and the, the connection got successful. Now let's use the same connection uh, to import an, uh, a data object and I will write it to HDFS and we'll see the behavior. I have created a simple mapping which has a confident Kafka schema registry topic as a source and the HDFS as a locations. So if you wanted to uh, import a new data object, then you can just click on uh, the project and uh, you can just go for data object and type uh, confident. So you can able to see the physical data object called confident uh, where you just have to browse for the connections. And here, if you search for the topics, where this is my confident uh, Kafka connections. I can able to list out all the topics. Since I've already imported the topic, I'm just using the topic and I'm writing to HDFS target. Now let's see the directory which is being, uh, where I just wanted to write the target. Uh, under the data object operations, if you see the advanced, uh, so I have set my file directory as a user PHS aggro. So, and the file name should be of video KB demo one. And let's make this as a video KB demo three. And I'm just writing as an agro file. So, let's save this. And if you go to the mapping, I'm just running through the Spark. So, I selected Spark and I've just selected the spark engine as hadoop my connection cco connection details so now my mapping is ready to run let's quickly validate and run the mapping so now there is no problems for let's run a mapping so now my mapping is running meanwhile let's go let's you know log into the cluster and see the files which will be get created under the the target directory which i mentioned So, so yes, so there is a active uh, staging directory got created under the target uh, directory which I have mentioned. Now let's go and open this directory and see what are the files got created. So this active directory will be get created uh, during the mapping run. Uh, this is called as a staging uh, directory. Inside that, uh, based on the mapping ID, there will be one more directory will be get created. Uh, this is the directory. So now yes, the file is getting staged into the HDFS uh, staging location. Uh, once the mapping got completed, uh, now uh, you will be able to uh, see the staging file got moved to the actual target location and then it will be get cleaned up. So now my mapping got completed. Uh, let's move on to the Hadoop server. Let's see the file whether it got created or uh, it got cleaned up. So now there is no file uh, and there is no directory called uh, 24 uh, because it was a staging directory it got created during the mapping run. Now since the mapping got completed, uh, it got cleaned up. So now uh, we just have to check uh, the actual uh, Hadoop path which was mentioned. Uh, during the mapping run. So yes, the video KB demo three. 
So this is the file name which I've specified. Now the files were created inside this HDFS. Similar to that, you can also use uh, the confident Kafka schema registry as a target. Or also you can use Hive or uh, S3 as a target. So make sure like if you wanted to have a auto refresh schema, then you just have to go to the data objects. Uh, below that there is an option to at runtime get a data object columns from the data source. If you enable this, then by default the schema, uh, it will be get connected to schema registry and the column, uh, it will get just uh, get the refresh and get the all the latest, uh, all the latest versions of uh, schemas and will be get projected uh, over the source. So this is about the demo. I can reference this document where it has clearly mentioned all the steps, how to configure the confident schema registry and which is available in the docs.informatica.com. We would like to hear from you. Please write us to support videos at informatica.com and follow us on the twitter.com slash infosupport. Thank you.